Welcome to Real Time, the podcast for realtors and all of us who are fascinated with the buying, the selling, the great storytelling. My name is Erin Davis, and you're going to love this episode, number 35, because it's about influencing social media, getting your name, your brand, your story out there. And you don't have to be a Spielberg or even a Kardashian to do it. It's a hyper-digital world. Many brands are finding success tapping into and nurturing niche communities. On this episode, Shanae Angleton-Smith joins Realtime to help you as a realtor build a niche of your own. Shanae is president and CEO of Kensington Gray. It's a boutique influencer agency rooted in diversity, and she's an expert in content creation and brand storytelling. In addition to building a niche, she also has valuable advice for you on what platform fits you personally, on how to strike an effective balance between telling your own story and having others like influencers champion your brand for you, and even what you might expect it to cost you. So let's dig in. Shanae, thanks so much for joining us today on Real Time. And for those who may not be familiar with you yet, and it seems from your numbers like not too many are unfamiliar with you, let's start with a quick backgrounder on you, could we? Yeah, of course. So I started off with a background in big media, working for one of Canada's largest media conglomerates. And um, over time, you know, things started to move from traditional media, so like television, um, radio, uh, print, etc., to digital, and then to uh, social media. And as my career evolved, so did my passion for social media. And um, in Canada, we're very fortunate enough to have a year off for mat leave. And while I was on mat leave with my daughter, Kensington, um, the concept of the agency Kensington Gray was formed. And uh, shortly, about a year and a half after returning to work, after having her, um, I left my job and started Kensington Gray Agency, which is a uh, influencer management agency that focuses on diverse creators, particularly black creators. Mm -hmm. And um, it's my life's passion and I'm something I'm really proud of. Wonderful. And to have it named after your daughter too, Kensington. That's so beautiful. Thank you. So what is your business mission then, Shanae? Our uh, business mission is to empower Black people, to empower Black voices, and to ensure that Black creators in particular are at the top of their game um, from an education perspective, and to ensure that they're not leaving any money on the table and they're being paid fairly and equitably. And with my background in media, as well as, you know, my passion for this space, um, I I'd sort of married uh, the best of both worlds. It sounds like it. And I was looking at some pictures on your Instagram feed, and there was a mug there with quite a striking message. Do you remember what it said? Yep. Pay me fairly um, and don't just use me for like diversity clout. Diversity clout. I thought that that was just perfect. So how do you think your message is getting across? Do you feel like you're really breaking through with your push for diversity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, diversity has is definitely not a trend for me um, or for anyone at our company. Uh, we've believed in diversity and have been touting diversity, whether it be um you know, literally or figuratively, I think I feel like my whole life. But uh, with everything that happened in 2020 with George Floyd, I think that a lot of companies um, kind of caught up with where we were already at. And mm -hmm. um, as a result of that, I think that real change is happening. I think that that time, you know, everyone was, was at home during the pandemic and we witnessed the tragedy with George Floyd and everyone. It was just an opportunity for everyone to just really reflect and to see where they could be doing better. And uh, a lot of both organizations, companies, people, communities really stepped up to the plate and have made long-term transformative change. And, um, and I think it's a beautiful thing to see. Well, what types of clients do you work with? We work with all kinds of clients. So our creators are in every category you could think of from fashion to beauty, to lifestyle, to parenting. Uh, so think of every, you know, brand or any brand that might want to work with creators in those space. And we've probably worked for, with them, whether it's Walmart, whether it's Home Depot, whether it is Louis Vuitton, or it is Valentino, or The Gap, Old Navy. We've literally worked with every brand you could ever imagine. That's incredible. 
How has the influencer world evolved, Shanae, from celebrity endorsements on TV, you know, late night TV talk show hosts selling Alpo dog food because that was part of their <laughs> shtick, right? And, and and in some ways, they were the original influencers. It's been a long road to where we are now, hasn't it? I definitely think it's 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 been a long road. Um, I think that influencers have always existed, um, but I think that you know it's a little bit more literal in you know today's terms. I feel like back then, you know, celebrity endorsements where it was it was very clear that um, you were being sold to, or that you know the celebrity was doing whatever they were doing for the money. You know, whether it's selling dog food or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think. With influencer marketing, uh, people have the ability to talk about things that they would already be talking about, um, but being paid for that. Um, but that's where, you know, the importance of authenticity and, you know, only endorsing things that you would genuinely use in, in your real life and that you have used before and that you would genuinely recommend. Um, audiences have become very smart and they can kind of sniff out when it's not an authentic organic partnership. Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so... I think that um, the new element of authenticity and realness and sort of lifting the fourth wall or lifting the veil is what I guess is what differentiates creators of today versus um, the celebrities of um, yesterday. Yeah, I think that you bring up a good point there, uh, talking about whether that talk show host actually used Alpo at home with his own dog or dogs. I think now it's expected or sniffed out if somebody doesn't use the product that they're endorsing. And it's expected, like if somebody is, for example, recently, the the whole brouhaha about the influencer who was, you know, plugging a mascara, and it turned out that she had fake lashes on. And so that can really take you down in a hurry. That authenticity, not only is it sensed, but it's expected. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's all about, you know, building a community, um, is all about building trust. Right. And uh, in order for you to have a successful and an engaged and growing community, um, they need to be dialed in and they need to really trust you. And once you lose or you've broken that trust with them, uh, they tune out and they disengage. Yeah. It takes a lifetime to build a reputation and a moment to lose it. Oof, you got to be so careful, right? And you, Sinead, your career, and you, you know, in a nutshell, you kind of summed it up very quickly and a very broad expanse of experience in your case. Tell us the one thing you would like to disabuse people of when it comes to their ideas of what an influencer is. If you, you know, meet somebody at a cocktail party and say, well, I'm an influencer, what is the thing that you're afraid they're thinking that just isn't true? We're not just like self-absorbed people that are walking around taking selfies. I mean, some of us are. <laughs> some of us actually are. But there are a lot of people who just take their um, the power of their platform um, very seriously and the influence that they have very seriously. And they really only use it to bring and add value to the lives of um, the people that follow them. And, um, you know, we're a new form of media. We're the new magazine. Um, We're the new talk show. We're the new radio station um, where people tune in to find out about the things that they love, to sometimes find out about current events, um, just to find out, you know, what's happening in the world. Um, We're a new source of, um, yeah, media. Yeah, a new town square, as it were. Exactly. 1.8 billion. Now that is one crowded town square. And who wouldn't want that many followers? Let me tell you, that's how many page views there were at Realtor.ca last year. And that's 121 million visitors and a half billion visits. No wonder Realtor.ca is the number one real estate platform in Canada. Now, back to Shanae Ingleton-Smith of Kensington Gray, talking the birth, growth, and power of the digital. So now that people know what an influencer is and is not, when did businesses start seeing the value of influencers as a part of a viable social media strategy, that it wasn't just kids doing amazing dance numbers in their basements? When did that evolution begin? The power of digital, I think, has been happening since the early 2000s, but I think that it really, really blew up um, around 2000. 
2013, the early 2010s, like 2012, 2013, 2014, where companies, you know, that couldn't afford to spend, you know, a million dollars on a spot in the Super Bowl or to buy uh, a page in the Toronto Star for $75,000, they're like, where else could I put my money? And they're putting it into social media and they were seeing real results, seeing better results, in fact, than using some traditional media sources like, you know, newspaper or magazine or sometimes radio. And, um, and I think that once they started seeing the results, they just kept on coming back and um, they haven't looked back since. Why should those who are on the fence make the leap? Why do you think? What would you say to those who are still saying, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure because I've always done it this way? I think it's where, you know, you have to go where people's attentions are. Mm -hmm. If you want to get people's attention, look at where their attentions are right now. It's in their phone. It's on their laptop. It's on their screens. Um, People are using traditional media uh, as a source of their news information and purchasing decisions less and less. Um, Though traditional media is losing relevance by the day and social media is honestly gaining relevance by the day um, as a source for that. And you kind of have to just get with the program or, you know, you'll be at a significant disadvantage as a business owner, I would say. Yep. And influencers now have this down to a science because we all know that social media is a powerful tool for finding and building a community of brand loyalists. So can you explain the pros and cons of targeting a niche audience as opposed to casting that wide net, taking out that full page ad or trying to get on the evening news in the middle of a newscast and having your ad in there or something when niching down, if you will, is valuable? So niching down is valuable because you're speaking to your people. You're speaking to, you know, people who are almost a complete and perfect alignment with, you know, the service or the product that you have to offer. And so there's very little wastage, if you will, um, when the people that are seeing your content um, with especially with uh, platforms on social media like TikTok, where the algorithm is so, so smart that it connects you with people who have a specific interest with the exact things that you're talking about. And so you get to, you find your people, you find your community, you find your target audience a lot faster, and uh, you're able to get to your goal that you're trying to achieve a lot faster as well. Okay, you brought up TikTok. Now, I want to talk to you as, you know, would-be influencer, me, to influencer, you. In total, I've got about 100,000 followers on various platforms, but I'll tell you that TikTok is the one that gets the least of my attention. And you've just opened my eyes to something that I didn't know, Shanae, and maybe for people listening today too, that even if you only have followers numbering in the hundreds on TikTok, as opposed to say, I have 30,000 or whatever on Twitter, that if I put out stuff, TikTok's going to get it to the right people instead of trying to build up all of those followers right out of the gate. Am I hearing this right? You are hearing me correctly. Uh, TikTok is an app that is built for discoverability. So the, most of the people that see your content are actually people that don't follow you. It's people that find you on the For You page because you're talking about things that uh, interest them or that they've searched before or that they've talked about before. Uh, the algorithm is extremely sophisticated, more sophisticated than any other social media platform that I've ever seen before. And that's why it's so easy for people to just literally sign up for the app and within, honestly, a few months gain tens of thousands, sometimes even hundreds of thousands of followers uh, because the algorithm finds your people so fast and with almost expert precision. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you for that. And hopefully a light went on for a lot of people here. And again, what I've learned from you just, you know, partway through our talk today, Shanae, is that you don't have to be dressing up and doing musical numbers or doing a tutorial on makeup or anything like that. It doesn't have to be that. Again, although TikTok has kind of a reputation for being flashy and fun and really sticky in terms of content, it's again down to authenticity. Sure, there's the flash and the fun, but authenticity works on that platform too. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, there's definitely something for everyone. 
And it's not like the previous platforms where you have to like, it's a struggle to find followers and to be discovered. The velocity in which you can grow on TikTok is way faster than any other platform right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's because, you know, you just show up as yourself. Then people that are interested in you and are like-minded will find you because most of the people that see your content are people that do not follow you. And that's what makes the app so exciting. When we return, how you can find your niche and then dive right in and really touch your followers where they live, sometimes literally. You know, not all influencers are selling, just like you should be doing about the good works you take part in in your community. Share your stories and use the hashtag Realtors Care and let everybody know about your good works, great causes, and you. Now back to Real Time and Shanae Ingleton-Smith. Okay, so how do you think that a realtor can find their niche and use that knowledge to grow their business, Shanae? So depending on whatever it is that you specialize in, whether it's the luxury space or the first time home buyer space, think about what that client would want to know more about and just talk about those things. Um, And by doing that, you're providing value for that specific audience. So if it's like the first home buyer space, maybe you can talk about some of the tax benefits that they can take advantage of when buying a first time home or different hacks on how to save for a down payment, Um, you know, things of that nature. You can talk about, you know, interest rates. Uh, If you are focused in the luxury space, then maybe you can talk about more luxury or first world problems, if you will. Uh, You can talk about, you know, homes with a wow factor. Mm -hmm. You can talk about the things that people that are in that spending bracket would be interested in. And then as a result of that, uh, you'll attract people that could potentially be clients of yours down the line. So really amplify your strengths and share the messages that you have learned and all of your wisdom. Do people ever worry about other people taking their ideas, though, Shanae? That must happen all the time on social media, right? If if you've got, say, a realtor who's got a TikTok channel that's all about, you know, those luxury houses, the one that's got the ice cream maker in the bedroom and that sort of thing, and yeah, that exists. I'd be kind of afraid if I did something like that on my account, somebody might, you know, borrow that idea. What do you think of that? I think that there are very few things that are like, truly truly original anymore and I think that there's a lot of um people yeah repurposing and doing things um in their own way however one thing about TikTok is they're big on accountability Mm. they're big big on giving credit um if you are outright copying like word for word bar for bar what another realtor is doing or what another person on TikTok is doing the TikTok community will find you and they will call Mm. you out and, um, you know, yeah, it's like you said earlier, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation, but a moment to lose it. So if you're doing things that, are, you know, call your integrity into question, like copying or things that are unethical, like, you know, not giving credit where credit is due or not giving inspiration credit if you were inspired by somebody else's content, then you'll find yourself in hot water and you will lose that, you know, trust it from your audience that you know, is highly coveted and so hard to build. So, you know, if you're inspired by another uh, realtor, if you're inspired by somebody else's content, just say that, you know, you can say, hey, I saw this on so-and-so's page the other day. I loved what he was doing. This is my take on the same issue. So, um, yeah, definitely don't try and, you know, pass off somebody else's work or somebody else's ideas as your own. Give credit where credit is due. And then um, when you are inspired by somebody else, um, try to find a way to make it into your own. There's really only one you and that's, you know, always going to be your superpower and lean into that as much as you can. That's fantastic. I think that maybe you just allayed a whole bunch of fears that people have had about, well, you know, there's so many people out there on these platforms. What what do I have new to offer? You have you to offer. And that is a really important message. Thank you for that. Now, Sinead, do you have any specific platforms that you prefer for different messaging? Like, I'll go back to myself as an example here. I'll put some of my content on Facebook and Instagram, others on TikTok and Twitter. So how do you decide where best to reach your target audience? Or is it more of a touch-em-all kind of approach? Yeah, so I would say that 
Instagram is like the aesthetic, perfect, you know, um, pristine app where, you know, that's where you can share the photos. That's where you can show like sort of like the final product. And then uh, TikTok is more the the um, unfinished um, how I got there. So maybe some of the behind the scenes or some of um, just a few snippets and tidbits from your day can be on, on TikTok because it's short form, it's video, it's casual, it's a little bit more organic. And then YouTube, for example, would be the deep dive. Like, this is how I did it. This is every, you know, step that I took. Uh, this is, you know, the blueprint where you can really take a deep dive and just really delve into your content. Mm -hmm. And then I would say things like Twitter and uh, Facebook, you can use those to drive to those other three major platforms and to just sort of bring awareness and just sort of like to circle your your followers back to those other platforms so that they can check that other content out. Nobody knows your brand better than yourself. And it comes back to the authenticity and what we've discussed about the wisdom and experience and the schools of hard knocks that everybody has been through. And this is especially true for entrepreneurs like realtors. So, Shanae, how do you balance creating your own content versus outsourcing it to digital content creators? A lot of people might be intimidated not knowing even how to use iMovie in their iPhone or whatever other programs are so easily downloaded and worked with now. So, how do you balance that, creating versus outsourcing? Yeah, I would say, well, first of all, do the things that bring you joy. Mm. So if recording and talking to the camera, if you love that and that brings you joy, definitely do that. If you're not a fan of editing, then find an editor. Find somebody who can edit and, ch and, and chop and, and, and mix your stuff together in a way that's compelling and entertaining. Um, or if you um, prefer to be behind the camera, maybe some other members of your team prefer to be in front of the camera and you can be the person that sort of films and maybe edits behind the scene. Um, another thing that I think that has really helped me is I try to document as much as possible as opposed to creating. I try to be the content and not orchestrate the content, if you will. So if I'm already, you know, going on about my day, if I'm already, um, you know, doing things, I can just put a iPhone on a tripod and record that. These are things that I would be doing anyway, as opposed to just like creating and kind of orchestrating something that isn't real. It's just better to document it or have somebody from your team document you doing something that you would already be doing anyway. So whether that's like a house tour, have somebody record you doing like a house tour, or maybe it's, you know, you, um, you know, sourcing, um, a new neighborhood or sourcing a new client or whatever, you can get those people to capture that behind the scenes and then you can pull anecdotes from that or pull little clips from that and then just post it up on your social media. So try to document instead of creating as much as possible. Document instead of creating. And again, that's more organic. It's more natural. It's more authentic. And there's always editing. We all think we have to be perfect. And sometimes it's the outtakes that are the most memorable and the most real anyway. That's true. It's sometimes hard to share them, but they're memorable. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, you know, if it's scary to or hard to share, that's some of the times that's your best, your best content and your best performing content. So don't be afraid to take risks every once in a while. Everything doesn't have to be always perfect. That's true. And I will add what my broadcasting guru told me, and she still talks to broadcasters and podcasters around the world. Be personal, but don't be private. There is a fine line and you want to go personal, but you always have to respect that privacy that might make people go, I really didn't need to know that. Yeah. Um, and it's something that you've said, too, that really connected in your message to us, Shanae, is that the comments, what people have to say about what you're putting out there, your content, that can sometimes tell you when you're going in the right direction or maybe where you should take a bit of a U-turn or a detour. Yeah. What we always like to say um, to our creators is like the T is always in the comments uh, that will send you in the right direction. That will tell you what you should do next. That will give you ideas for your next video or for your next post, because your community will tell you what they want. Um, and, you know, pay attention to your comments. That's, you know, that's it's almost like crowdsourcing for free or doing market research for free. Yep, absolutely. 
Coming up, Shanae Ingleton-Smith of Kensington Gray talks about finding the right influencers to help you reach your target audience. Hashtag helpful advice. Whether you're looking to open up shop in Sherbrooke or peruse palaces in London, Ontario, of course, you can find just what your heart desires on Realtor.ca. Oh, and while you're there, open the tab and visit Living Room Blog to read stuff like the most Googled questions about real estate answered by realtors, plus idea-sparking topics like optimizing space in your galley kitchen. Um, Okay, you could be there for a while, and that's all right. Kick back in the living room blog section of Realtor.ca. Now, we're back to Shanae Ingleton-Smith on Real Time. Okay, so say I want to find somebody to champion my brand, and if I didn't think it was me, how do you go about finding, Shanae, the right personalities to champion your brand? Where would you begin? So I would say that you, you know, you can start by just going on Instagram or TikTok and going through hashtags that are relevant to your niche Mm -hmm. and look for the people that are showing up at the top of those hashtags or reoccurring often in those hashtags and then reach out to them. Uh, You can also, you know, utilize an agency like a Kensington Gray who represents influencers. You can ask them, hey, do you have somebody that likes to talk about this or do you have somebody that is an expert in that? And then they'll find somebody or source that person for you. But you can definitely search, uh, especially, you know, the searchability on uh, platforms like Facebook, on even LinkedIn, on uh, TikTok um, are superior. You can the, the searchability is um, is really sophisticated there. And then on Instagram, it's a little bit harder, but you can also use hashtags on Instagram to just find people who are experts or who continue to pop up or end up being at the top of those hashtags. How does one usually expect to pay an influencer who is not, you know, themselves? If you want to hire somebody, do you pay by clicks and views or is there a set rate or generally speaking, how does it work? So usually you have to, you know, typically a lot influencers don't do a lot for free anymore. In the very beginning, people were just like happy to be um, asked to endorse things. And a lot of people would just kind of do things at, on barter. But now for the most part, influencers do expect to be paid. Uh, and it's different depending on who the influencer is. It's different depending on what your budget is and the relationship you have with them. Um, but it varies. But the general rule, I would say, um, is that for a post, um, influencers are typically paid between 3% and 5% of their following per post. Sometimes it's more if it's super niche or if it is um, if they have extremely high engagement. And then sometimes it's super less if, you know, uh, it's not as niche or if, um, you know, the client's budget just doesn't permit. Interesting. Okay. Now, what else should you consider when you're planning, researching, and executing an influencer strategy? Because I think a lot of people listening right now are probably getting kind of excited about this whole idea and going, yeah, okay, I can try this. I can do this. I don't have to orchestrate. I can just create. I can be myself and see what comes of it. So what else should you consider when you're doing this? Well, I think that you want to figure out like, what is the goal here? Is the goal to sell houses? Is your goal to bring in potential home buyers or home sellers? Um, You know, is the goal to um, just raise awareness or build your profile? Um, When you're sourcing creators, you want to find people that have a true and genuine connection to the content and the topic that you are talking about. So you want to, you know, source creators that have a true passion for an understanding of real estate or of the neighborhood um, that, you know, you're selling a home in or that you are, you know, focused on so that it's authentic and it doesn't feel forced. And uh, you want people that feel natural in front of the camera where when you watch one of their videos, you feel like you're just talking to a friend on FaceTime. You want somebody who's just going to, you know, make you feel comfortable, somebody who you feel like, you know, you're just out having a drink with. I think that those are the best um, ways of connecting. And, um, and yeah, just making sure that it's just, you know, authentic. Yeah, we are hearing that word a lot today, and for very good reason. And we hear the word authenticity all the time, really, when it comes to brand storytelling. So how do we ensure then that paid partnerships remain authentic? 
I think that the best way to ensure that paid partnerships remain authentic is to only take partnerships uh, for brands that you would be talking about organically. So if you already love Home Depot and you go to Home Depot all the time or you love Canadian Tire and you use Canadian Tire for everything uh, and you tell your friends about it, then it's a natural fit if you know you work with that brand in a paid partnership. Um, it's just almost like you're talking organically about it, but in this case, you know, you're being paid, but it seems true. It seems authentic. Um, don't talk about things that feel forced or that you don't really use because then you lose credibility and people are really smart. You know, don't mm -hmm. underestimate the intelligence of your community and the, the audience that's watching. Uh, they know when they're being sort of, you know, bamboozled and yeah. they tune out and unfollow when those things happen. So it's, it's never worth it. Just taking, you know, trying to make a quick buck by, you know, touting a brand or service or product that you don't really care about or use in real life. And this wouldn't apply to realtors, especially the ones doing their own social media. But I'm sure that there are personalities who are known for plugging like 40 items or, or you know, it's like, oh, OK, there she is again. And this time it's, yeah. you know, Jello. And yesterday it was something else. And, yeah, we can all have diverse interests and things in our lives. And we may love Jello and Pepsi and Canadian Tire. But sometimes I think that you can risk being overexposed. And I'm sure you tell your clients that too, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> I guess it can be, but it depends on whether you want longevity. I think that saying no to things, that there's power in saying no and just really staying truthful and aligned with, you know, your ethos. And um, and then just, you know, moving forward with the things that align with your brand best. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to take everything. That's right. So if realtors are interested in integrating influencers into their marketing strategies, tell us where you think is a good place to start, Sinead. So, um, I mean, I, I truly believe that, you know, you're your best influencers. So, you know, you don't be afraid to show up on camera or even if you're not showing up face forward on the camera, mm. you know, don't be afraid to start posting things and posting maybe some of the properties that you um, are selling or sharing some of your expertise, um, whether it just be by audio or, you know, with photos and just talking and sharing your knowledge so that you can connect with the right people. Um, but if you are looking to cr connect with influencers, I would definitely say, you know, you can definitely go through an agency, but you can also just connect with people um, by social media, start following them, send them a message. If you think that there might be an opportunity for you to work together, um, you know, reach out to them, send an email for, in most cases, people's contact information are available in their bio. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, you miss all the shots that you don't take. So just, you know, try, um, check it out. And, you know, in real estate, um, people that are in real estate are great at sales. Um, mm -hmm. you're, it's almost like door knocking, but virtual. Mm -hmm. So, um, don't be afraid to knock on a few doors and ask and, and, and put out some feelers to figure out how you might be able to work with somebody or how, um, or whether they might want to work for you in a social media capacity. Okay, uh, let's look closer to home then, so to speak. What about a client? Do you think a client would be a good storyteller? Yeah, I think a client would be a great storyteller if they have like a testimonial um, or if they have like a positive experience that they want to tell. There's nothing better than word of mouth marketing. And if you have a client that's willing to share, you know, the, a positive experience, that is worth its weight in gold for sure. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. But most people, you know, don't feel truly comfortable performing to a camera or to a, you know, even if it's just a phone or whatever, too. So you've got to be judicious, don't you? Because you want it to be authentic and not like somebody is sitting there like a deer in the headlights answering your questions. So I think that's something we could come back to. And if you haven't emphasized it already, then maybe it's worth mentioning, too. Again, you can always edit and maybe be a little judicious with your editing. Should you show your content to somebody else before you put it out there into the world, Shanae? 
Yeah, I feel like, you know, most content should like get a run through in the group chat first. Um, a mm-hmm. lot of my content gets sent to my girlfriend's group chat before I post it just to make sure that, um, you know, there isn't anything that I'm saying that is incorrect or inaccurate or that there isn't like, you know, a stain on my shirt or whatever. <laughs> Um, but the same thing happens. Um, the same thing applies with social media. Just, you know, run it by, um, somebody that you trust just to make sure that you're putting something out there that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and just, you know, tying back to your question previously about, you know, do you use a client? If you have a client that doesn't feel comfortable speaking on camera or, you know, going online and sharing a testimonial, sometimes your work just speaks for itself. So like, maybe it's like a two part series where you're talking about this home that you've listed and then part two or the follow-up is that you're sharing that the home has been sold people don't always have to know the story or the person behind you know who owns the home or who the client is because people obviously value their privacy but there are so many other ways that you can be you know your own cheerleader and share your successes and share um you know how well you're doing as a real estate agent in a way that will attract you know new clients more clients and more business uh to you and uh your platforms. Well, it's certainly been eye-opening and so encouraging and just, oh, the sparks of inspiration from talking with you today, Shanae. It has been a real pleasure and thank you and continued success to you and Kensington Gray. And uh, thanks again for taking the time to talk. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And we appreciate you listening to The Podcast for Canadian Realtors discussing issues that affect you and can help enrich not just your business, but your life. Make sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss one episode of Real Time. And if you've got time, why not go for a deep dive from designing women to ag gurus, thinking green and shedding light on human rights. The resources you need are right here on Real Time. This show is produced by Alphabet Creative. Rob Whitehead of Real Family Productions is on the tech side, and I'm your host, Erin Davis. We can't wait to talk to you next time on Real Time.